Welcome to another edition of It's a Great Day at Sagu podcast. And with me here is my sidekick, Reverend James Carnell. So, Carnell, you've been traveling quite a bit. Some of us have. In fact, there's been a, a, quite a few traveling, mm-hmm. uh, going to different uh, leadership events and district councils. So what are some highlights of some of your trips that you've just been back on? Um, well, over the past uh, month, I've been traveling a lot, and the highlights were coming back home. <laughs> Just kidding. No, it's been great. Been to uh, five different district councils so far. New Mexico, Colorado, uh, Oklahoma, Arkansas, South Texas. It's been a lot of fun getting to meet a lot of our alumni, being able to connect, share the exciting things that are happening here at SAGU, all the new things that are going on, and uh, promoting homecoming, which uh, seems to is generating a lot of interest among our alumni. So it's been a lot of fun. It's been great. Uh, as I said, I love this time of year, being able to go and see our alumni and reconnect. So it's good to be back home, though. It is. Uh, I got to go to Louisiana to, is it Lafayette or Lafayette? Lafayette. 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 I got to go to Tallahassee, Florida, and Biloxi, Mississippi. Mm-hmm. And uh, enjoyed the fellowship there. We gave away $5,000 scholarships. We did. A number of these. And we had some interesting uh, recipients. I had a, in Louisiana, I had a lady that won, emailed me and said, I direct Teen Challenge in Louisiana. And there's a young lady that's graduated from there and, and wants to go to a Christian university. She says, can I give her the scholarship? I'm like, yeah, you can do it. That's so awesome. she may be on campus this fall. Isn't yeah, that cool? That's great. Yeah, there was, uh, as I said, in those, different, uh, those five different ones, it was really cool, the different stories that I ran into when we gave away the scholarship. The first one was a grandpa. Uh, he's in his late 70s, and, but his daughter, granddaughter, is a missionary kid to the Dominican Republic, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, she's wanting to attend SAGU next year, not this coming year, but the year following. And he said, can I give it to her? And I'm like, yeah. And he's, oh, wow, we were just praying about how financially we can make that possible. So that was really awesome. And then another young man went to another university, not to be named Evangel, and uh, he is wanting to go ahead and pursue his master's degree in SAGU. So that was really cool. Yeah. In, in West Florida, a young man came up to me after my presentation and uh, he said, wait a minute, wait, you were in Florida? I said Tallahassee. Yeah. Tallahassee. Yeah. Tallahassee. I went so that you would not get to go. I, that's what I was saying. Did you, I, did you stop at Panama City on the way? Of course Destin. not, man. It's just yeah, there and It back. was just business. I'm committed. You were that's just, right. Yeah, yeah. So after my presentation, uh, he comes up to you me. You look a little and, red. Thank you. And he sunburn. said, he said, I spent two years at Sagu and had to come back home. He's from Mississippi, I believe. But anyway, he uh, came up to me and he says, I'm finishing up my undergraduate in a local college here. But he goes, I want to take... I'm going to go back to Sagu and do my master's in Sagu. So, you know, it's it's nice to for those That's people great. to kind of come up and say, hey, I'm alumnus, and because we didn't have a reception there. But uh, just to get to talk and see people out on the road is uh, inspiring because you just never know the stories. Oh, yeah. It's exciting. People. Yeah. Yeah. One of, the, uh, one of our alums at uh, this last banquet I was at in South Texas, she uh, has a daughter that's attending this fall, coming fall. She won. She was so excited. Um, she goes, "Oh, great! Now we're you know we can give it to our daughter. She's going to be able to use it you know the next four years." That's great. Right. So yeah, good stories. A lot of that's exciting stuff. I can't believe we're giving away five thousand dollars at each district council. That's, that's cool. cool. That's cool. Yeah. Well, have any of you heard of the book "Who Moved My Cheese"? It's a really cool book. Yes. It's uh, a parable that reveals profound truths about change. It has four. Um, amazing kind of amusing characters who live in a maze and look for cheese to nourish them and make them happy uh sounds like you james Mm -hmm. um but two are two of the mice are named sniff and scurry isn't that cute and two are little people being the size of mice who look and act a lot like people their names are him and Hall. It, in the, isn't this great? You're just so excited to hear more, aren't you? I tell you, I can't yeah. wait. I'm, I'm on the edge of my seat. Cheese. Wait, can I get my glass of milk and blanket? You can. Yeah, you can. Okay. Cheese is a metaphor for what you want to have in life, work, relationships, money, health, or maybe even spiritual peace of mind. The maze is where you look for what you want in the family or community or work. So in the story, the characters are faced with unexpected change. 
eventually one of them deals with it successfully. So I wanted to just share about seven quick truths that comes from this book, Who Moved My Cheese? And if this inspires you a little bit, I encourage you to go buy the book. It's real small. It's a great read. But number one, change happens. It, it, it is a fact that and someone in your life, your work, your church will always be moving the cheese. It's just it's just what happens. Number two, you need to anticipate change. If not, you won't be ready and could get caught unaware. Number three, monitor change. Smell the cheese often so you know when it's getting old. Mm. Are you okay with moving the cheese in your department, mm. your church, your family, whatever might be needed to make improvements? Mm. Number That's four, stuff right there. adapt to change quickly. The quicker you let go of old cheese, the sooner you can enjoy new cheese. Now, we're not talking about VP Phipps here. I, I know he's retired, but we're not talking about <laughs> He's not old cheese. <laughs> I'll call him. I'm going to text him right now. Hey, by the way, old cheese. That's uh, right. Yeah. And number five, change. Move with the cheese. Don't be a complainer when change, uh, change happens. Most times, change is for the better. And number six, enjoy change. Savor the adventure and taste the new cheese. Sometimes it all boils down to... Your attitude, James. Wow. And number seven, be ready to quickly change again and again. Organizations should keep moving the change or the cheese. If you have the mindset that change will always happen, you will deal with the change easier. Mm. Thoughts? Are you trying to tell me something? I, you know, you take it however you Moving want to take it. The old cheese out. Well, I, I've, I've, been, I've been meaning to say that I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna switch you and JB's office because uh, yeah. you're a little loud over there. Mm -hmm. You're disruptive, but yeah. you know, don't worry about it. You'll, you'll enjoy. You'll enjoy this. Hey, space. I just, I just love our, you know, time together in the office. You know, they used to be uh, Dr. Barnes's office, Dean Barnes. That's what I hear. When and I was at school, actually, VP Phipps says my office was his office. That tells you how long he's been oh, around wow. as well. Yeah. yeah, and I remember, you know, going in there to receive, you know, accolades and accommodations. I'm sure, you did. When my time here, it was always perfect mm -hmm. attendance. You mm -hmm. know, everything I was being applauded for. It was, it was pretty cool. Uh, well, speaking of uh, jokes. Um, Jokes. We got a. We're talking about me. Yes. Okay. We we, we, we received sure. an email from one of our distinguished vice presidents here, Ooh. and uh, he happens to oversee IT. If you remember the last podcast, mm -hmm. we were kind of, we weren't making fun of IT, but we were wondering if IT even had jokes or even shared jokes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so nothing personal. Or could they get to, jokes? To, no, nothing personal. Yeah. But, I'm telling you, Fred Gore. Wow, he, he threw he took, the he threw it down. He, he says, took offense. That's right. He says yeah. we will prove to you we have good jokes. Yeah. So did wow. they succeed? Well, they sent some jokes. Okay. Now, good. It's uh, you know, it's relative. The, it's in the eye of the be beholder, I guess. <laughs> so we'll have to see about that. But hey, uh, you know, speaking of jokes, it was good to be back home after traveling all that time. And, uh, you know, got home, got to be back with my wife. And I said, you know, one of the things I learned on this trip is, you know, one of the speakers said, you've got to learn to embrace your mistakes. Mm -hmm. So she gave me a big hug, <laughs> <laughs> welcomed me back home. It was nice. It was great to be back. She loves me. She does. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm staying quiet, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we've got a uh, few jokes from IT. Now, I, I, I just wondered, uh, I'm kind of wondering what it stands for. I mean, IT, what, it, what IT stands for. And I think that's... <laughs> <laughs> it's, come on, JB. Yeah, you used the uh, uh, wrong button there, JB. That's perfect. Okay, so I'm just wanting to... These are some that uh, the IDP, IT department shared, Kirk Pascal, uh, being the uh, head honcho over there, the main guy, the main guy that wires all of us for connectivity here at Zagio. So he says, the problem is, though, he said, we, we have to increase our intelligent quotient to be able to understand these jokes so we're right in now. trouble then maybe. so well put on your put on your smart hats right now let's see if we can do that all and, right and let's go give me okay. a few minutes all right so here we go so these are the jokes submitted by it uh here we go i got an email the other day that said to turn all maps backwards turns out it was just spam maps backwards spells <laughs> spam 
Okay, yeah. <laughs> our, it our, helps. Guest, our guest here today is not talking yet because we haven't introduced him, but no. I think I'm he's ready to leave. Because these I are think... horrible jokes. <laughs> I think he wants to leave. Oh, my word. Can I just say before being introduced, I'm, I'm watching these two guys and there's opportunities. They keep looking at me and I'm not supposed to say anything yet. This is one of the most painful podcasts I've ever been on. It's tough. I know. It's great. So, okay. So, it really helps if you can see the jokes, too, because, sure. you know, they, they, you know and once again, intelligent quotient here. Okay. Do you know Einstein bagels are great? You know, they're yeah. shut down for the summer, but they're great, right? Yes. Of course. Einstein was a genius. So, he's expected to have great bagels. Little known fact is that his brother Frank was a real monster. Frank Einstein. You got to put them two together. Oh. Frank, Frank Einstein. So once again, um, see, you haven't put your intelligent quotient you know, add on here. So far, Frank IT Einstein. is not impressing They're not impressing you? No. Okay, let's go with the next one. All right. James Carnell and I, this is from Kirk. He said, James Carnell and I went into the Sagu cafeteria to eat, and they had these huge brownies that were both interested, they, that we were both interested in. However, there was a sign that said, please take only one. God is watching. Hmm. I walked over to get a chocolate chip cookie and James turned to me and said, take as many as you want. God is watching the brownies. <laughs> Boom. Oh. We, we timed it perfectly there. We did. We got that. Wow. Right, got that great. Okay, here's another one. Wait, there. how many more do we have? Oh, uh, we got uh, two. Oh, goodness. Yeah, <laughs> two too many. Let's just do one. <laughs> we got two too many. All right, this one. He said, Rick Bowles and I were at a funeral, and the widow asked, is there anyone else that would like to say a word? Rick stood up and said, plethora, or plethora. It depends on how you, yeah, you know. <laughs> Whether you're from Missouri or it not. It depends on if Danny Alexander's in the room. <laughs> you can say it however you want. And he sat back down. The widow said, thank you. That means a lot. <laughs> oh, man. I think I think we need to shut it down, right? One there. more. Oh, last oh, one. Oh, okay. Last one. It says, James walked into Starbucks the other day and said, I would love your mildest roast, please. And the barista responded, you have average ears. <laughs> These, these are what IT comes up. So you wonder what they do. They're in this dark little, little whatever they're in you know, over there. It's called an office. Office, yeah. but it's cold and it's dark. <laughs> I'm expecting mushrooms to be found in the corner somewhere, right? It's just I don't know why they do that over there. <laughs> what, what kind of mushrooms? <laughs> well, that's what I'm wondering with these kind of jokes. One last one. No, he he didn't want to leave Amy Van Pay out of this, so he stuck Amy in here. He says Amy Van Pay loves pets and decided to buy a parrot for her kids. However, the parrot had evidently picked up some bad words from his previous owner that would not stand stop saying much to her chagrin. She finally had enough, and out of frustration, she stuck the foul mouth parrot in the freezer. Immediately, the parrot stopped using bad words. In fact, it got very quiet in Amy's words. She had maimed the poor parrot and quickly opened the freezer door. The parrot slowly walked out of the freezer and onto her arm and began to apologize and say he was sorry he would never use those words again. The parrot had one question for Amy as he looked back towards the freezer. What did the chicken do? Nice. That, that one, that one, I'll, I'll give that one. Okay. Those okay. are, all right, Kirk Pascal, because of your off some jokes, we're going to give you a gift card. Come by the office and see Amy Van Pay and get your gift card for submitting those IT jokes. All right. I wonder, wow. I wonder if academic services could do better. Than they that. have no humor. Okay. <laughs> no, All just, right. Moving right along. They have no, we have a special guest today. You, we have a special guest. We today. do. Thank you. I'm, I'm privileged to be here. Right? Yeah. Thank you. Dr. David Fraze. David is a professor at Lubbock yes. Christian University, LCU. He's an author, most recently a, f a follow-up book to Practical Wisdom for Youth Ministry, The Not-So-Simple Truth That Matters. And then called Practical Wisdom for Youth Group P Parents is the latest book that he has. And so, welcome, David. Oh, it's good to be here, and the jokes were awesome. I want to meet your IT folks. The mushroom thing has me concerned, and I would agree, academic services, uh, they may not have very good jokes. That's true. Yeah. GPA stuff, and it's not fun. Yes. It's good to be here. Hey, thanks for being here. Hey, it's good to have you. Good to meet you. And even though you're a friend of Rick, I don't hold that against you. So it's it's good to good to meet you, Dave. Oh, well, Rick is great, and he does talk loud on this. He does. I noticed. Yeah, I know. Before we started, uh, James was complaining that he could not be heard, and there's kind of a power struggle going on there in is. this office. There is. Yes. Rick has the dominating voice. He so, does. Uh, he, well, when you're the host, 
You, oh, you can do what you want to do. Right? Host with the most. David, we met, what, about eight years ago? Has yes, it been about sir. eight years ago? And uh, I brought brought you on to FCA. For those of you that don't know, that's Fellowship of Christian Athletes. He came on staff part-time, uh, was working as a, a youth minister there in the area, and uh, I asked David to help me launch a new initiative we called Character Coaching. Years earlier, uh, coaches at public schools were asking for volunteer chaplains to help with team devotions, opportunities to reach their athletes with the gospel. But as things happen in our society, along the way, school administrators begin getting more and more pushback on chaplains. It's mainly what it was called, but they were getting pushback on allowing chaplains in the public schools. And so that word became an issue. So um, we were able to create... Uh, character coaching changed the name, but then we also really t- took a hard look at what the purpose of it was all about. So character coaches uh, create an opportunity to be, to mentor, to build relationships with athletes, uh, help the coaches along the way. So I wanted to ask you, David, um, recall, go back, uh, because I know you were also serving as a character coach there. Um, what were some of the experiences that you recall uh, leading some of these uh, students and mentoring and and you were you know we had to be careful because we we're in public schools to you know be careful not to just get in there and preach the gospel every day but some really cool things happened in relationships so go back a little bit and explain where you at where you were at during those times well let's go back to the very beginning James you're talking about your hey Rick gives a call and hey let's you know come work at Sagu um, yeah. my story's sort of the same so uh, before I met Rick, probably six years before, um, there was an FCA staff member in Fort Worth, and this is before they reorged everything, before Rick came in and uh, organized it the way it is today. And so uh, this guy, a friend of mine, a Baptist minister at North Richland Hills Baptist, was leaving to become a senior pastor, and he says, hey, do you want to do character coaching? I'm like, I have no idea what that is. And he goes, well, you just come and you do some – you talk about a word of character on Friday mornings, and that's about it. So I said, Sure. And uh, I never received a background check from Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Um, he introduces me to this guy. He introduces me to the head football coach, um, who is now retired in Kansas. He worked for KU for a while after leaving the high school. Uh, one of my best friends to this day, uh, Chuck Wells, who's now at Timber Creek, but he was the baseball coach there at Richland. Um, and then this donor, and I'm, I'm sitting at Pete's, uh, Risky's dad's barbecue place, so we're eating barbecue sandwiches. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> and the next thing I know, yeah, you can have access to our football team. That's literally all I knew. So I walked onto the field, a 6A football uh, program. Um, the coach stopped practice, which is odd, and uh, looked at me and pulled me over, and I'm sitting in front of the 6A football team, and he goes, this is uh, Dr. Okay, this is Coach Frey's. Tell him what you're going to be doing. Now, just remember, <laughs> I've not met Rick Bowles yet. Yeah. I, I've not been background checked. I'm standing on a 6A field, and this coach asked me, what are you going to be doing? I've never seen anything. So fortunately, um, I've coached some. I've been uh, raised around public schools and understand all the Title IX issues. Mm-hmm. So I said something I'm sure that was was brilliant. And um, I started, <laughs> It's written down probably it, in a plaque. Somewhere. It's a scroll. Yeah. It's a scroll and a plaque on the side of the field now. Mm-hmm. And I, I remember um, the next Friday I show up and I say something, and that happened about three weeks. And then the, the providence of God, I would say, one of the, the young men in my youth program at the time uh, who I brought to faith, happened to be on that varsity team. His father moved up to high school from junior high and gave me a bunch of clothes and said, wear these Friday night and come with us. And then I became kind of the Lord's Prayer guy for mm-hmm. this fellow. So I'd say the Lord's Prayer. Did, did you have to memorize it first, or did I, you have it memorized? I, I'm very Protestant. And so yeah. I'm like, I, I know we, <laughs> we talk about it a lot, and I teach it. Uh, but I'm like, oh, my word, do I know it? I kind of panicked. Um, did you kind of do the Gregorian chant version? I oh, Father, thou in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. <laughs> yes, it was kind of like that. Um, but but through, through the season, just kind of walking with the students, um, it became one of the the neatest things I've done, I would say, in the last 15 years of youth ministry. Um, when I first walked onto that field, there was an older man who stopped me. And this is funny because I know y'all are all, uh, you're, you're sagu, and I'm going to start making jokes with Rick. 
I've not seen anyone juggle snake shit. I'm kind of disappointed. Dude, um, you missed it. I, I'm trying. Last week. Last week at our faculty. Yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah. See, yeah. And I, that's a bad deal. So um, I, I have historically been, I've been raising the Churches of Christ. Just go ahead and cue the hiss. I, <laughs> thank you. Um, I do believe y'all are going to heaven. Still questions with Rick. But, I mean, most of us, we, we have those questions on the God's grace. How much is it? But I... Yeah. I, I walked onto that field and this guy stopped me. He goes, "Who are you?" I said, "Well, I, I'm a youth pastor. Where over here at, you know, the Hills Church? Wasn't that a Church of Christ? And change your name? Yeah, we, we, I think we're, and it was really awkward. And we're he just said, a Church of Christ, here? but we have a cool website. So it, no, it's, we use instruments. N- another story. So <laughs> we're sitting here talking, and he's he after he bets me, I go to the other side of the fence, and he goes, "That's my grandson." And it was the quarterback at the time. He goes, I'd appreciate any help. Um, that young man still calls me. This has been 15 years. I've done this a man's, uh, this grandfather's, his wife's funeral. I, I have been involved in that family for 15 years, and it's kind of a neat story. But So I'm in this for six years. I could go on and on. It's been pretty amazing. And one of Rick's board members and I were playing golf, and he goes, you got to go meet Rick. And Rick literally, James, you'll love this, he took a piece of paper. We're at a restaurant. And he goes, we don't know who you are. I mean, literally, but we think you're doing this. And there was one, at the time, there was one piece of paper about character coach. I'm like, yeah, I think I'm doing all those things. And, I, and so he goes, we think you're doing it pretty well, but you're not in our system. We don't know what's going on. So it, really, really long story short, um, he invited me to come train and tell his staff what I'm doing with character coaching. <laughs> well, here's a year. I'm, I, he said, after okay, you've been I'm, doing it, yeah. I want you to do it. Well, I've been doing it for six years. I want you to do that. I want you to codify it, and mm-hmm. then I want to expand it. And he got me so excited. I mean, we started with what they were kind of huddle coaches at the time. We expanded it all over Dallas, Fort Worth, passed it through UIL, through uh, the uh, THCA. It's now uh, we can have, and it's pretty unique. I don't think there's anything like it in high school football in Texas because that's kind of a cult. Um, we have. <laughs> Um, a presence on the field, and we're actually, I've trained the Texas Sports Association officials that we actually help also control what's going on in the field if they need us. So it's it's uh, been quite a That's quite awesome. a journey. You left out, though, to me, the, the, the great part of the story. So when we're at the restaurant, and my board member is introducing me to you, and he had given me a heads up. He goes, you know, he goes, I... David's David's from the Church of Christ background, and I know I know you're I know you're Pentecostal, so is this going to work? And I go, well, let's find out. So we're talking, and and he's kind of yeah, after we've kind of joked around for a little bit. David's like, yeah, I haven't I don't know about you snake handlers, you know. And I said, well, I got a question for you. If I hire you, and we go to our sports camps, yeah, and we get young people saved, are you going to just immediately demand that we baptize them in water right there on the spot? Now, <laughs> If that's not funny to you, then you don't know about the church, some of the church of Christ back then. But (laughs) so we both kind of have these. So this was our joke moving forward. He'd say something about snakes, I'd say something about baptism. Mm. So anyway. And so we were actually at DBU and a bunch of kids came to faith, and he goes, Do you have a problem with this? I mean, he's always jabbing. You know, (laughs) we we have a common theme here. Rick's just like, There is a tap, 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 tap. There's a time of grace in that baptism thing. So it's got to be done, you know, in in a certain amount of time. So, you well, know, yeah. you think, I, yeah. James, I'm liking you more. So I, I'm, <laughs> well, you know, I, I did work with seven denominations as, you know, citywide youth pastor one time. So it was your big deal. I learned. No, no, it's small town. <laughs> Not James as big as Rick. Big deal. So it was, wow. it was fun to get to work with everybody's, you know, different backgrounds. That it was is, really cool. It is fun. And Rick's like, do you have a problem with that? And I said, <laughs> then there was a found at DBU and I said, kids will be tripped. You know, I mean, I don't know if that's... <laughs> Bad. He walked around yeah. with a, a spray Squirt bottle. Gun. Yeah, yeah. We, oh, we will we have a different conversation one way or the other. <laughs> Y'all even believe in immersion? Okay, well let's move on. Yeah, well, let's yes. Move on. So let's we here in just a few minutes when this is we're, we're taping this on a Tuesday, but we are about to uh, engage in character coaching training here at Sagu, and uh, I just want to thank President Bridges for. Uh, allowing me to present this to uh, Coach Godding and, and VP Phipps. It, it is uh, character coaching uh, here on SAGU is about to become part of the, the athletic department this fall. 
Uh, some of you may know Jackson Sandifer. Jackson is a U.S. missionary based here in North Texas. Uh, he is currently a character coach in Duncanville. So if you know anything about Duncanville football, I mean, they are great. And he's been doing this for years. And I was just kind of casually sharing uh, this idea of doing character coaching here with our athletic teams uh, with um, a couple of people, and, and Jackson was one of those. And he calls me up a few months later and says, hey, I talked to my boss, and he, he thinks I'd be someone that would work great as your part-time person to help with uh, launch character coaching. Jackson couldn't be here this morning, or otherwise we'd, we'd have him here. But <laughs> the bottom line of that is uh, Jackson will help us get this thing launched this fall. And so today uh, we are having a training session with our coaches and with about 10 potential character coaches who he's already recruited to come in and learn more about character coaching. So, David, we've just got a few more minutes left, but t- tell us just kind of an essence what character coaching is and, and maybe how you see this happening at a Christian university versus a public school. So kind of go into just a, an overview of really the heart of what character coaching is and what we want to do here. Well, the concept is the same. Of course, you have more freedom here at SAGU uh, and at Lubbock Christian and other places that – that are, are Christian based, but but we walk with the coaches and we walk with the players. So um, it, it, all your coaches here, and I know a few of them, and the coaches that are uh, that, that I've worked with, there's a lot of believers. I mean, especially even in our public universities, not all of them make a lot of money, mm-hmm. and so they're, they're trying to make a difference. And so what they do on the field, we try to do that in life. So we help them with all of those life skills and the great things that you get out of sport. Um, one thing that uh, that we found out, and I'm helping some with the research right now, is that our athletes, especially those on the college level, and this is what's going to be so exciting for SAGU, their whole identity, even our Christian athletes, tend to be based on their athletic identity. Well, the problem with that is if you're a high-level performing athlete, you actually foreclose your actual identity. So think about that. When you get through playing, simply put, you don't know who you are. Character coaches come along to remind students um, and student athletes and support those coaches that you are more than what you do on the field. Um, that if you can lay down what you do on the field and then pick it back up, especially in Sagu's situation as a child of, of God, what a powerful combination. And so you get the most out of athletics in that experience. Um, I do have an actual story. Trent Grisham, who's the center fielder for San Diego, um, He's been one of our students, and I I got the pleasure to be his character coach throughout high school at Richland and follow his career. And I finally got to go to San Diego. I was out there speaking, um, not at the beach, James, but I was out there (laughs) speaking at Pepperdine. And so um, I went, and he, you know, had, you know, passes to, um, you know, the the batting and everything. It was so much fun, a lot of fun. And we started talking about just the stress of being a pro athlete. And I love what he said. And it goes into to one of the reasons that I'm so excited about Sagu having character coaches. All the stress that was going on, and he was telling about someone who had just committed suicide that was on he had in minors. And uh, he said, I remember what you told me, David, that my identity is found in who I am and not what I do. Mm-hmm. And I was just taken aback going, hey, it, it actually makes a difference. And so – yeah, we help with competition. We help with competition mindset, and we help with all those things that the coach would want us to do. But the greatest deal, and here's the big fancy word, I'm going to use this, and I know that even Assemblies of God believe in this word, incarnational. So mm. I, I'm not there to be a coach and do X's and O's. I'm not there necessarily to just straight out say, if you were to die today, would you go to heaven or hell? Um, the Holy Spirit brings moments of great conversion, yeah. but we walk along with. And when you walk along with First Peter chapter 3, somebody's like, dude, James, you're different. Rick, you're different. What's going on? Let me tell you why I'm different. Mm-hmm. And then that conversation starts. The Holy Spirit takes over, doors open. There's so many kids, Rick, that have come to faith just because of a faithful presence in um, a student's life. And so it is that works in private and public schools, but what an advantage here at Sagu yeah. to just come out and say, hey, I'm just going to walk with you and so that they have more of an open door. Um, and I would say, and I'll say to our character coaches, if you come in very hard and say, you know what, guess what? You've come here to play football, but you're not saved. We're going to get you saved. It's not going to work. Mm-hmm. We're here to be incarnational. We're here to walk with. 
most of our character coaches are competitive little cusses, and that's what we want. <laughs> you want to be competitive. Mm-hmm. You want to be involved in that. But at the same time, you, you gotta you got to look at yourself and realize it's more than about the wins and the losses. It's about those relationships you build. And it is absolutely the most incredible thing, really, I've done in youth ministry the last 15 years. That's awesome. You know, <clears throat> working in a community like you're doing in, in, the, in the public atmosphere, it's, it's so cool to, I think, for many youth pastors, for many pastors, um, they kind of get stuck into that church bubble where they don't have very much influence, any much, very much connection with what I call real life, with people. Real doing, life uncaged pagans. They I don't mean, even know the names of pagans. Exactly. How sad is that? And so it's, it's, a, it's an awesome time to be on the field, you know, I mean, to be there, to be just, you know, rooting them on, encouraging them. You know, I believe in that wholeheartedly, and it, to see that, and especially even here at Sagu, a Christian University, uh, there's so many young men, women that need, uh, you know, just guidance, wisdom, how to navigate their faith. You know how to grow stronger in their faith. Maybe, maybe, maybe some of them are at a place in their life where, yeah, they grew up in church, and you know it's mom and dad's religion. But you know, being able to see how that can actually be lived out in their own life, you know, and have that character coach someone they can trust, and I think and, that's an awesome thing. And they're not going to talk to their coach, especially. Yeah. Let's go to the university level, and Rick, you know, this scholarships are attached to things, and I mm-hmm. think our coaches at our Christian universities do a really good job living out faith. For the most part, they do. But Mm -hmm. there's also this fine line because some kids, in an inauthentic way, feeling like if they get involved in religion, the next thing you know, their coach will play them more. They don't get played. The next thing you know, the alumni office is hearing that there's a bunch of crazy kids on whatever sports team. Yeah, Um, It's very difficult, especially, and I would say sometimes more difficult at a Christian university to do athletics because of expectations. Mm -hmm. But here's the reality. I know at Lubbock Christian – um, our own denomination is only like 28% of our student body. Then like 60% Christian. That leaves like 40% of people who are there for the education the experience. I love that as a general Bible teacher. Yeah. You know, I get that, that that's a mission field. But some of the work that I do with our athletes, they don't want to tell their coach what's going on. Their coach would accept it, but they need that mediator. And mm-hmm. the same thing is going to happen here because I don't control the playing time. So – if I'm talking to little Rick over here, who's you know his cheese happens to be alcohol at the moment. Sorry, I want to bring that back in. Ricky D. And he's like Ricky D. <laughs> anyway, we could go on. And you're the coach, James. And I need to tell you something. This happens a lot in public schools too. Yeah. You know something's going on, but I could go to Rick and say, "Okay, Rick, let's talk it. Let's work on this." And I can go to you as the coach and go, "Rick is dealing with something. He don't want to talk to you right now, but we got mm-hmm. it." And he's like, "Thank you," because we built that trust. Yeah between coach and character coach, that we're trying to – it's more than just trying to get a kid on the field to play. It's also to get a kid to transition in life. Yeah. Um, and college is a hard time, even at SAGU. That's awesome. And I see that, you know, it's a it's a cross-denominational ministry when yes. you're dealing with that. That, you know, you're, you're not dealing with, you know, yeah, I'm trying to get you to be a sin like God, Church of Christ, Baptist, whatever. It, it's – it's I want to – help you to navigate life and to learn how to be the best representation of Christ you can be. And it's about Jesus. He's over here. What's his name again? What's James. James. James is shaking his head because here's the deal. It, I, I wish denominations, um, it, it's not it's not even a conversation with these students. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. it, they don't even know what that word means. We'll probably have to translate and yeah. make it a joke for your next joke time. <laughs> But kids want to know Jesus. Jesus yeah. is not controversial. Exactly. Now, yes, he's controversial, but not. that's what they want to hear about Jesus. So you're going to have a lot of students on your sports teams that have no idea about what Sagu is. But if you have this character coach that says, I'm going to be Jesus, and I'll talk to you about Jesus, and I'm also going to help you become a better competitor – that becomes very authentic and real. That's awesome. I mean, that's what we're selling, right? We're exactly. not selling a denomination. We're selling Jesus. Exactly. They're all shaking their heads for the studio audience. Yeah. The yeah. the thing you mentioned Don't earlier. About this. I didn't hear an amen. Amen. Okay. There we the go. thing you mentioned earlier about identity, uh, all through my years of working with Fellowship Christian Athletes, that during testimony times at camps especially, an athlete would get up and say, you know, prior to the experience that I just recently had or a commitment to Christ or a recommitment to Christ, Football was my identity. If mm-hmm. if I got hurt, I was depressed. My world was, you know, I, I had nothing to do. I my life was over. And when they met Christ, Jesus, that person who becomes life, mm-hmm. they're like, 
you know, if I'm not playing football tomorrow, that's okay. Mm -hmm. And that what a transformation. And that doesn't come easy. And you know, here at Sagu, uh, it is it is part of the responsibility, and I think it's part of the privilege. I'm not going to speak for coaches, but it's part of the privilege to try to pastor these these students, and that's going to continue. But these character coaches are going to be an extension of these coaches, extension of what they're trying to get across to the student who who maybe checked all the boxes and 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 maybe they 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 do know Jesus but maybe they left that 5 years ago and really did, don't have a daily commitment to Christ and they get here and through their coaches and through chapels and whatever else devotions but now you've got someone and most of our character coaches are coming from our local churches mm -hmm. uh, I know one particular one that is going to be serving in the basketball area yeah, he's an executive pastor of a local church, and, and he's already been coming out during practice time because he loves basketball. He just loves hanging out with these guys. Now he's going to be official. He is going to have a purpose and a plan, and those basketball players are going to see him and say, hey, thank you for not only already coming out and watching us, but now you're pouring into us and you're giving of yourself. And it, it won't happen overnight, but I guarantee you that this is going to make a difference in lives of our student athletes here on campus. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, um, Ryan, who helped, you know, we worked together on the initiative for a long time. He played for the Cowboys and got us connected, and we did some work. And actually, Coach Smith and I work for the Cowboy Youth Camps, and mm -hmm. so that's where we met. Um, we talk a lot about identity. We talk a lot about um, the idea of who you are on a field, and it is couched within, and I'll call it Acts 17, which we'll talk about. Paul preached an entire sermon um, in Athens and never mentioned the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. but it was all over it. And so whether in a private or public sense, character coaches get to go in and get to represent, get to contextualize this experience of sport and try to bring it back to what we intended. Um, and it's it, it. sometimes coaches are like, so who are you? You know, um, mm -hmm. Because I, I, I've been known to yell at a ref or two, and I've only had two <laughs> flags thrown at me as an ordained pastor. So, um, but, but in the midst of that, uh, it, you become real to them, and yeah. you, become, you embed yourself with the team, which is, Ricky, you and I have talked about this, one coach, one team. So that guy you're talking about, he will be the coach for basketball. And once you're ingrained now to that level and they realize mm -hmm. you're not just there to give devotionals, because mm -hmm. character coaches – People, we have dime a dozen people who come in like, I would like to speak to your sports team. Mm -hmm. I'm a pastor at whatever. No one cares. I mean, they really don't. I don't mean to hurt people's feelings, but That's true. we'll bring pro athletes in to teams. And they're like, ah, it's fine. What does Coach Phrase have to say? Because um, it's about relationship. Yeah. And once you embed yourself, that's where the magic will happen, Rick, is yep. because yeah. people will say, you did my wedding. You did this funeral. Mm -hmm. You were at the hospital with me. And, and I need you right now. And when that person shows up, it's so unglamorous, but it's the most glamorous thing you can do in ministry. Well, there's a need. And my son played two years baseball here at Sagu. Yeah. Um, you're, you know, pastor's kid, grew up in pastor's kid home and everything. But he came here, and his, his, um, his experience was different than what he expected, you know, coming to a college. Because, you know, the athletes, their schedule is totally different than the rest of the student body. Mm -hmm. You know, they're playing baseball, so they're practicing until, you know, 5, 6, 7 o'clock. And then they go uh, to lunch, dinner separate from everybody else. You know, they eat by themselves. And, and he said, you know, I didn't get the experience a lot of the kids get at a Christian college. And, and I see the need for that coach to be there and that separate schedule, you know, to really speak to those kids and to really be able to to connect with them where they're at and what they're doing and 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 really touch base with them on a, on a really key level. So that's awesome. Well, phrase, thank you for being here. Oh, and it's good we're, to be here. We're about the jokes to, and everything. Yes, uh, I know Did you he say you enjoyed the jokes. Well, I think he wrote them down. I think he's going to share <laughs> those at those Lubbock so Christian later. University at some some point. Are we going to take him by to see the mushrooms? <laughs> So, April 29th, we were excited to have a groundbreaking ceremony for our new track, uh, football, and soccer turf field, Phase 1. And, James, read the um, announcement that we have uh, from uh, Ron Crane, and uh, so everyone can pay attention to that area back there. Ladies Jefferson. and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? This is a message from Chief Ron Crane. If you are on the Sagu Waxahachie campus, be advised that the athletic field parking 
Behind the Shaper Building is closed effective today at 510-2022. Construction has begun, so please be careful as you drive around Shaper, the back of the Wellness Center and Bridges Hall. There will be trucks and equipment in these areas, but so, we are making improvements, and it's exciting. Exciting. And we have one additional announcement. Uh, on Friday and Saturday, that's the 13th and 14th of this week, we have the campus-wide rummage sale. Okay. So if you want like a free dresser, I'm probably going to pick up like two myself. Uh, don't miss it. It's going to be from 7 to 11 a.m. Uh, at Collins, I think. If, if it's not Collins... Uh, just look for, I yeah. think it's in the basement Close. of Collins. It usually yeah. is. Yeah. The basement yeah. of Collins. So cool. bring out your rummage. Why do you need two bring dressers? Bring out your rummage. Why do you need two dressers? Why you, uh, one for uh, my kitchen supplies and the other one for my uh, pets. I'm glad you ca- you clarified. I thought he said dresses, and I was just looking strangely at you. No. I mean, dressers. Not, for, not for me. You need dressers. Yeah. Dressers. Okay. So. Cool. He's okay, gonna. Man. He's that's that's a cool idea. Put your pets in a drawer and and just hide them. See, I just can't. I couldn't answer clothes. <laughs> Pull them out. Pet the pet the cat. Put it back in. And say, you stay there, yeah, cat. That's fun. Good job. That's good. Yeah. All yeah, right. I Thank y'all. It. This has been another edition of. It's Sagu. But what do we call it? It's a great <laughs> day in <It's> Sagu. <laughs> What is that creative name you came up with, Rick? Oh, wait a minute. I know. It's a great day at Sagu. You're welcome. Help me. <laughs>